And traders, yes, I'm done for today. I'm having another green day, although not, uh, <laughs> not so very green, I mean, compared to my other days. But over three grand today, which is beautiful. Really like it. I had a um, small loser in MKR, stopped it where I should have. ELY, a winner. Woku, my best winner. UAA, another winner. I'm going to finish just over three grand. Let me short you shortly go through some of the trades. I think the most important one would be Roku. Now take a look at Roku here. Roku started with a gap up. I mean, Roku is up right now 6%, so it was, probably was up 3.5% or so when we first took a look at it. What you want to see in a gap and go scenario, you want to see a stock that is gapping up, of course, just like Roku did. Coming down, you want to see the sellers moving out. You don't want to see the sellers in control. There will be some sellers, of course, because there's always some profit takers. It's gapping up a few percent. So you want to see the sellers coming out. Does it always happen that the sellers are coming out? No. So at the point where it comes down, you look for a reversal. I posted Roku today for a long over 135.50 which was right over here. At 135.50, that was the point where I imagined it's going to move higher. When I say imagined, you need to understand that when you're trading, you're not trading according to absolutely clear technical analysis rules. If that was the case, any computer could have taken your place. The high in Roku was 135.90. At that point, you need to look at the point of no return. What is the point of no return? Just, as re just a reversal is not always enough. Like, okay, it came down, it moves up. Is it really going to continue higher or is it going to stop here and come down? Just imagine the point where it will not return. In my imagination, and you need to activate yours as well, 135.50 or a cent over the semi hole number would be the point of no return. Meaning if it reaches that point, I would say it has an 80% chance to move over the highs. What differentiates between a novice trader and an experienced trader is the imagination. You need to be able to imagine. To imagine. You need to be able to take a look at the stock and say, I'm not getting in at the right technical uh, formation because that everybody who reads a book can do or every computer can be programmed to that. I'm getting in a stock at the point where I imagine it's going to move over the highs. That's the big difference between novice traders and experienced traders. And that was 135.50. Now, I saved 40 cents on this trade just by getting into earlier. What does it mean? It means my risk reward gets better. My profit gets better. Everything. I mean, everything, everything you take, everything you look at as this trade just gets better all of a sudden. And, um, you know, in this case, it's 40 cents. But in other, if you're trading for a long run, if you're losing money, look back at your trading account. And for example, if you lost money in the past year, just add three cents to every trade you took and you'll find out that just three cents are a big difference between making money and losing money. What about 40 cents? So if you're just going in very technically according to technical analysis rules, yes, you still had a great trade over the highs. Look at the beautiful move up. But the point of imagination is the point where you should be, which you should be looking for. So uh, that was my main speech today. <laughs> but let's take a look at um, some other trades like AMKR. That was a failing trade. I was looking for a reversal over 14. Now again, stocks that started with a big gap up. It's up 20% right now. So it tried to move higher came down. Of course, you don't chase it while it move higher. You wait for the pullback. You wait for the sellers to come. I waited and they came and now it was trying to move higher. At that point, it could return to the high. The risk in this trade was that it came down from the highs too much. Usually, you don't want to see stock coming down from the highs that much. You want to see it stopping somewhere around here. So anyway, 14 whole number 
was a good entry point because it is a whole number. You can see that it bounced off the 14 several times over here and here. And once it did make the move, it moved up 22 cents, which is a shame because my target was 25. So I could have had a small winner here. Instead, I had a small loser because I did not let it move down much. My stop was right under 13.90 over here. I lost like 12 cents and that's it. I was, in, you know, to start with, this technical formation is not the best. It's okay, especially if you don't trust it that much and you have a very small target. So if your stop loss is 20 cents, which is reasonable, you can see here, and your target is 20 to 25 cents, this could be a nice trade that puts some money on your table. It's not wrong to take that one, but it's not the best technical formation. And um, maybe I should have taken my partial at 20 cents and have a winner instead of a loser. But anyway, it's a small loser. I, I, I did not expect much of it. So when it started coming down, I knew I should have a, I should have a stop. Another winner was, uh, was uh, ELY. And ELY is the same idea. The stock is down 8% right now. So it started with the gap down, came down, moved up. Now, this is the exact opposite of what we've seen earlier in Roku. You want to see the buyers getting out of the way. So the stock came down initially. There's nothing you can do about it. Then it moves up. Then you wait for the buyers to fail. And then it comes down again. And look at this beautiful whole number here. Again, $19. Whole numbers are a great support and resistance. Look at the first time it bounced, the second time it bounced, the third time it bounced, the fourth time it bounced. We were ready and we shorted it under 19. Did it do much? Not really. It moved down a bit, moved up. Lucky enough, gave us a nice, a nice uh, opportunity here to take a partial. Moved down 50 cents. I think I got 50, 45 cents partial, something like this. So somewhere around here, I took my partial, which was good enough. I mean, it did put, uh, what, like $700, 770 on my table. So that's good enough. And then it just went sideways. Once it just goes sideways, there's nothing there. I'm still short 400 shares with a stop over here. So if it's going to get there, I'll be out. If I'll be lucky, my last 400 shares will give me some more. But I don't expect much, really. I mean, it's just going sideways. Maybe the fact that it's down 8% would uh, do something, but not much. My main um, candidate today was UAA. UAA is down 17% right now, but that wasn't very interesting. So again, you look at the stock that is gapping down and then moving up. That's enough. I mean, the same thing I mentioned earlier. You want to see the buyers moving out of the game because it gapped down. You're looking for a gap and go. You expect it to continue coming down. So it moved up, then it came down. And there comes again the whole number at 17. Look, it came down, was supported here, supported there. I mean, I did not get into this trade over here for some reason. I can't remember why. I was go waiting for it to consolidate and come down again under 17. So once it came down under 17 the second time, that's the time I shorted it. And again, lucky enough, I got my target. So it was a very small winner. But it came down nicely, and ever since, it's just going sideways. And I'm still short 100 shares. Again, it was a nice, profitable trade, but could have done much better. Certainly did gap and go, but not much, just like uh, ELY. So a small winner here, a small winner there in ELY, a very nice winner in Roku, which did very well. And AMKR did not do as I expected. So just, you know, when you see something not going your way, just stop it, move out. That's it. Very simple. Guys, I'm done for the day. A nice profitable day. And um, I thank you very much for being with me today. I enjoyed it. I look forward for our trading session tomorrow. Scott, I won't be trading on Thursday. I'm flying on Thursday. So we'll see, we'll see each other tomorrow. And thank you, traders. And thank you guys on YouTube. We finally broke the 1,000 live viewers barrier today on YouTube. So thanks a lot for you guys in YouTube. That was nice. And if you don't mind give us, giving us a thumb up just for this, that would be highly appreciated. So just one click of a button 
and will thank you deeply. Thanks, traders. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading team. Our professional analysts will teach you how you can trade stocks from your own home without risking your own money. Click here to learn more about our funded accounts program. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.